So at number six, we have the PowerShell Web application. This is a particularly cool feature of Server 2012. It requires the IIS web server. And what it does is it creates a PowerShell gateway that you can place in the DMZ, similar to the remote desktop gateway. The idea is that your users use Internet Explorer or some other standards-based web browser and go to HTTPS, your gateway machine slash PSWA or whatever application uh, location you choose. And we'll, change, we'll show you how to change that default in a second. Now, the way this works is having installed PSWA on the gateway server, you need to add a bit of security. And that security basically says who can go where. You'll also need certificates because this is all accessed over HTTPS. Now, for the demo and in testing, I'm using test certificates. These generate certificate error in IE, but we can ignore that for the purposes of testing. Now, once I've added all the PSWA authorization rules, I can then simply log in and go to my chosen server, which can include the gateway host itself. So this diagram here, what I see is a web-based console user. That could be someone sitting out on an iPad in Wembley Stadium. That could be uh, you sitting at your uh, IT pro's desk in your, in your office, basically going possibly through the internet or your intranet to, through your organizational DMZ to the PowerShell Web Access Gateway Machine. Now, you basically do an HTTPS link to this, uh, this host, and you get up a little screen, which then allows you to see PowerShell running on any of the targets. So here's what it looks like. When, when I run the, the, the gateway, you notice my certificate error, I get the, uh, the, the, the screen Windows PowerShell Web Access. I enter uh, a name and password, and I say which machine I want to go to, click on sign in, and in a second, hey presto, I get uh, a sign in. Now what's kind of neat is uh, I can see uh, that this in fact is, I'm, I'm running uh, as cook of administrator on, on this particular machine. And so how do you do it? Well, in a detailed level, the first thing you do is you have to add the web server role to your system. Uh, you need IIS before you can install the PowerShell web application. Now, once you've done that, you can add the PowerShell web access feature to your system. Shouldn't require a reboot and installs the access, uh, also installs a PowerShell web access module onto your system. And finally, what you want to do is use the power, that module's install PSWA web application command to add the application into IIS. Now, the install PSWA web application command takes three parameters. The web application name, which is the PSWA by default. The website name, we're basically going to put this underneath default. And whether or not to use test certificates. I've chosen to use test certificates here just to make life simple. Now, once you've done that, you need to uh, fully install that and add an access rule. The access rule is added by using the add PSWA authorization rule. And this, this rule or the rules you put in specify what user or group can use the gateway, what destination or where they can go, and a configuration name. So this allows me, for example, to to authorize Malcolm to go to machine M1, M2, and M3, but on that machine not to hit the default PowerShell configuration, but perhaps a restricted configuration. Malcolm might be just an exchange administrator, and so he might be restricted in some of the things he can do. For example, he might not be able to load the Active Directory module from that system. So I've got very rich uh, authentication through the normal authentication mechanism, and I get great authorization through these PSWA authorization rules. Again, if I, if I want to be really simple, I can simply say add PSWA authorization rules star star star. Everybody can go anywhere and use whatever the, the, their default session configuration name is. This is not a good idea for production, but it sure makes life simple when I'm testing. Uh, this, this go anywhere, anyone rule, as I say, works very well. That's what I've implemented in the demo I'm about to show you. As I say, it's not a good idea in production. So let's have a quick looking demo here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out to my desktop. And I just happen to have uh, a 
link to PWSWA. Now, I'm running from a, a, a laptop, and I'm going to go up, and here we have running on uh, PowerShell Web Access, running against server S1. So I'm going to log in as cookum slash TFL. That's me. And notice with this being uh, 2012 and Windows 8, I could press the look at the uh, password. And the computer name I'm going to want to go to, first of all, is S1. Now, this is the gateway machine itself. And you can, as you see down here at the bottom, it says I'm connected to S1. So now I can do something like I can say, oh, I don't know, a host name. And there I am, I'm on S1. If I say, who am I? It tells me I'm cooking TFL. If I say, get modules, there are all the modules. Oh, no, nothing's loaded. Get module minus list. And now I get a list. And notice it's running, and I'll bet you I'll get a list of all those modules. Now, I can now click on the, I go off to the, bottom right hand side of the screen here I can click to sign out and what I can now go back to the sign in page again I'm going to log in as cookum slash TFL TFL and I'm going to uh, put in my password and now I'm going to go to cookum one now what's interesting about cookum one is this is actually, and you notice down at the bottom right, I'm assigned to Cookum 1. This is actually a server 2008 R2 box. And if I do $PS version table, notice one, one, one kind of cool thing here. I can actually click this uh, tab and do tab completion. Oops, I didn't do that quite right. Let's try that again. Um, Let's try, who am I? Okay, I'm TFL at $PS version table. And now you can see this is actually version 2. So this is pretty cool. This means that I can put one PS3 2012 server somewhere in my DMZ and access not only all the new uh, 2012 servers, but also any 2008 or 2, 2008 uh, servers as long as they're running PowerShell 3. Well, that's really pretty cool. Okay, that's a quick demo and let's go let's move on to number five.